Welcome back to Impact 2011 at the Venetian in Las Vegas. It's day three, April 12, 2011. I'm Scott Lanningham, host of Developer Works Podcast with my good friend Todd Turbo Watson, IBM blogger, technology evangelist. And we're joined by Roberto Medrano, who is Executive Vice President of SOA Software Inc. Welcome, Roberto. Thank you. Good to have you here. You have such an amazing background. I was reading about you uh, having worked at HP and Avnet and Sun Microsystems, and, and you served on President Clinton's uh, White House Security Summit, yeah, right? That's right? And yes. at, at one time uh, honored as one of, one, of, one of the 100 most influential Hispanics in the United States. Well, only three right? times in a row, the oh, last three years. Oh, well, more than once. Well, that's yeah. pretty amazing. And like <laughs> I said, amazing. Yeah. And, it, and it made me right off the bat want to ask you your view about the state of things with SOA governance as we see them today right now. I mean, it's something we've been talking about for a few years, but and what's your perspective on it right now? Well, SOA has grown so dramatically. So everybody that's doing SOA will need SOA governance, and SOA governance now is taking a new phase. So we see a lot of projects now where they started doing SOA without SOA governance, and now they really need it. And cloud is just making it that much more important. Right? And if you want to do cloud, you need to servicize your uh, applications. Make, make it service oriented architecture, and therefore you need to have SOA governance for that as well. Todd? So Roberto, I'm curious how uh, SOA software's portfolio is helping IBM and its clients with its governance, with SOA governance. Oh, very well. We have many clients that are uh, WebSphere uh, clients, mm -hmm. and all these clients uh, also have other products for Microsoft and for Red Hat, for example. So our products provide an extension to the IBM products to help all those components from the other companies to be a heterogeneous SOA governance play. Mm -hmm. And that's what, how we try to help them. So we have uh, customers on telecom, customers on financial industry, very horizontal, using multiple website products and using SOA governance from SOA software. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know if you heard Steve Mills and his uh, oh, yes. comments this morning. Uh, so he gave us a nice arc and, and kind of almost a, a, a backstory about SOA kind of circa 2011 coming out of the, the downturn, business picking back up. We're obviously at a certain point in the evolution of SOA. I'm curious, from your perspective, what are some of the key issues and challenges you're hearing from your customers at this juncture with respect to SOA? Well, SOA now with cloud computer initiatives and with new applications mm -hmm. and with mainframe that they want to incorporate, uh, they're trying to continue servicize the applications. So they're going to continue trying to figure out what do I need on that? Do I need a, another a component to do SOA governance? Do I need a, another cloud burst or a data power machine from uh, IBM? Mm -hmm. Do I need to accelerate uh, the XML from a data power machine? Do I need to do security for that? All those components, management, how do I monitor and manage all the services that are going into the cloud? How do I ensure the SLAs are there that goes from one component, one application to another application to a mobile device? and all the transactions are tracked across the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Those are real key issues that people are, are dealing with as we speak. And this cloud computer is the new IT of, uh, uh, of these days. Mm -hmm. So imagine converting IT now into cloud computing. Every issue that we have solved in the past for the last 45 years has to be solved now in cloud computer, private clouds and public clouds. So, and hybrid, right? So, and hybrid. And a mix, so that's Correct. additional complexity. Correct. Correct. So and you're talking there about emerging expectations in some ways. What about, uh, if you kind of crystal ball looking ahead, what do you think the big changes are that are going to be coming around all this that make it more possible for you all to deliver the value you need to deliver? Well, I can only think a couple of years uh, because the changes are going so, so rapidly, right. so fast, uh, new devices, uh, new ways of communicating, new, new ways of collaborating, mm -hmm. and new business models that people are creating. So the new changes for us is really, how do we enable all those business processes that exist from beginning to end and underneath is the infrastructure that we, all of us have to provide, IBM and the rest of the companies and ourselves to be able to communicate and provide the right track. For example, in our case, we need to figure out what kind of services need to be built. So if this organization has some service that they were built, this organization is asking for new services, and then the boss out there is saying, we can only fund this, there's a way to do portfolio management of services for that. The next level, once you figure out what those are, how did you develop the right services at the right time? So I only want to develop the ones that most of the people are asking me and the ones that are strategic, and third, are funded. And then after you do that, 
and after you do your testing and the whole life cycle management, you have to put them in operation. How do you do the operation for that? The policy management all the way from the thinking stage, developing stage, to the running stage, and how do you do security management for those components across the entire life cycle? Mm -hmm. And for that, certainly, SOA governance is that big aspect. And within that, you have to have all the other components. You have an ESP, for example. You have to have a data power machine. You have to have a, uh, all the components that IBM has. I know you're about out of time, but before you go, I wanted to ask you about being a global WebSphere community sponsor at Software, uh, SOA Software Inc. Can you talk a little bit about what that means? Well, we love uh, two things. We love the impact conference because uh, we really sell only to the large enterprises, and the large enterprises are here at Impact, mm -hmm. and they're IBM customers. Uh, the second thing is the West, the, the Webster organization is a great avenue to, to exchange ideas about products, exchange ideas about uh, the different topics that people want to discuss because they have Westfield products. It's a community of users organizations, which we like that as well. So we learn a lot and we give something back to them. Sometimes they want some of our webinars in there, mm -hmm. some of them want some of our white papers in there, and we provide those for them for the, for, so they can consume them. So it's a, it's a great organization for us. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Roberto, for your time with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, by. I, uh, I hope I uh, provided you some Absolutely. insight uh, and uh, you guys can continue asking me to come back. Absolutely. We hope, you, we, hope we get to do this again next year, Thank if you. not sooner. All right. Roberto nice. Madrano, again, is Executive Vice President of SOA Software Incorporated. Todd Watson, Scott Lanningham. We'll be back with a lot more from Impact 2011 in just a minute.